Hello, um, I have colitis, which if you don't know, um, that is a chronic inflammation of the large intestines. Um, it, you might think, you know, that might not sound so bad, or maybe you're thinking that sounds terrible. Um, <laughs> well, I guess you could both be right. Um, it is um, largely manageable. Um, much of the time um, and also it's it's very um, life-changing it, it affects kind of all the areas of your life from your mental health to your physical endeavors um, it just kind of a lot to handle um, I've evidently had it for a number of years I just was re recently diagnosed though so it's one of those things where I mean I don't have cancer, <laughs> so you know there's that. Um, it can get painful sometimes. Um, it can be a little overwhelming at times. Um, it sometimes. Uh, here's a really good example. I had a very stressful couple of years, and it really took a toll on my body. And uh, you know, some people just overeat and they get a little bit heavy, and you know that's where their stress takes them, you know. For me, it kind of went to dark places. It affected my mental health, my physical health, just everything. And uh, unfortunately, uh, colitis is very much so worsened by severe stress. And so being under severe stress for such a long time, it actually, um, I had colitis before, but it really um, rocked the boat. It, it made things not great um, in there. <laughs> Um, if, if you're not really good with your anatomy, um, the large intestines goes from your small intestine somewhere around here. I'm not, not a doctor, so I don't know the exact place. goes up and around and down, and then it goes to your, um, to your rectum. So, or Uranus, ah! Um, and so it's, it's kind of a large area. Um, my inflammation seems worse in the last part of the colon, which I believe is called the sigmoid. Once again, not a doctor. Um, but I have had, um, ev there's evidence that I had some severe um, um, inflammation in this part, the middle part too. So, like I said, it causes a lot of bloatedness. Um, there's actually um, a good chunk of time where my brother, every time he saw me, would say, wow, you've really packed on the weight, because it looked like I was fat because I was so bloated. Um, I was just kind of confused by it, because, I mean, the rest of my body doesn't look fat. I mean, you can see me, you know, and so then I had this, like, kind of bloated thing going on. That was, that was, um, I just thought it was, <laughs> I thought I was getting fat, you know. Um, and uh, it can be painful sometimes, um, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but sometimes you can't sleep on a certain side, maybe. Um, when you are not going through treatment and you're in the middle of what's called a flare-up, which is when symptoms get really bad, um, <clears throat> it, it, you'll, you'll have to go very frequently. There's really no holding it. Like, when you need to go, it's now. And um, a lot of times people with colitis uh, will have where they actually um, poop themselves. And so it causes a lot of anxiety because am I going to be able to hold it? Is there going to be a bathroom? You start memorizing where all the bathrooms are. And even then, sometimes people with colitis just kind of become recluses. They just kind of withdraw from, from people, from the world. Um, and oftentimes that feels safer um, and more comfortable. It's hard to keep pushing yourself to go out when you're in pain. It's likely that you're going to poop yourself. And people just don't really understand colitis, and so it, you get a lot of people saying, ah, that's not so bad. It's like, eh, I mean, I understand that it's not cancer, but I mean, at the same time, I do have an increased risk of colon cancer because of this, and it causes a lot of pressure and stress to my daily life, so I mean, maybe you should walk through a chronic illness before you, you know, go saying how bad it is or not. Um, and then other people, they kind of make out to be like worse than that. They're like, oh, it's so terrible. Duh, how can you live? And it's just like, well, you know, I, I was actually kind of having a good day today and not really stressed out about it. But um, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm now I'm I'm really just thinking about how 
how it's um, kind of eating me from the inside out. That's that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, it, it, it is a little bit hard to handle, but then again, I, I don't really know of any chronic sicknesses that are easy to handle. You know, some people have like maybe back pain, um, kind of around a lot. It's, it's one of those things where, yeah, <laughs> it, it's just chronic illnesses have their own little, their own little things. And one thing that I'm very, that I'm very thankful for is that I don't have to go through somebody else's issue. You know, there's, there's other people who have chronic issues and that's theirs and I don't have to carry their weight. I only have to carry mine. And uh, maybe they don't understand, um, you know, where I'm coming from or all that. And that's, that's okay. Um, that's, that's all right. Um, I don't, I don't have to have them understand it. Um, it, it, um, it gets very frustrating sometimes because I'll have, um, stools that'll go from, you know, very wet and just coming out very loose. They're called loose stools. Um, and there won't be like water. It'll be like a stool, a poop, but it'll be like unformed and stuff. And it just comes really quickly. And then you'll have maybe another one that'll be like maybe more of constipated. And so then you get like anal fissures, which are where you have tears. And every time you go to the bathroom, it'll hurt really bad. And then um, sometimes you'll barely make it to the bathroom in time, or you won't make it to the bathroom in time. And that that's kind of frustrating. Um, and some people have it worse with colitis. Some people have it not as bad. Um, it really is just person-specific. Um, when I first got it, I kind of felt overwhelmed, though, because um, I've had anxiety and depression and stuff like my whole life, um, you know. And I'm, I'm stuck in a job that I'm really not overly excited about. I don't have any passion for it. I don't enjoy myself. It's just kind of one of those things where I'm just getting through. Um, I actually was very much so considering um, just going ahead and cutting it loose and getting a different job. But now that now that this is kind of upon me, um, it seems better to just kind of wait and get my bearings before I make any drastic changes. Um, it, colitis causes a lot of stress and anxiety, and stress and anxiety makes it worse, so they kind of just feed each other. Um, and it just, it's just kind of a lot to handle and a lot to kind of work through. Um, those people who have colitis, they're going to understand what I'm talking about. It's, it's, not that, it's not that I'm depressed or I want to give up or anything, which sometimes I do, but I mean, not, not right now. Um, it's just that... You have to remember very precisely when to take certain medicines. And, um, you know, then I have this other medicine that interferes with those medicines. So I have to make sure it's spaced all, all okay. But then I've been having these like weird uh, blood sugar drops, which I don't have diabetes, so I have no idea what's going on there. Um, and so I have to eat just right and have a certain diet and eat at a certain time and all these different things is just a little bit hard to manage and I'm still in that first stage you know where you just got diagnosed you're just trying to figure everything out I haven't I haven't talked to a nutritionist yet so you know we're still at the really early stages and when you're first getting your bearings from being diagnosed with something it's just very hard to you know know what to do with it. you've got all this like pent-up emotions and you don't really know how to feel it feels like Maybe you're at death's door, but at the same time, you're still trying to be positive. And you're like, okay, maybe I can just, let's just focus on now. And, and, and hey, what a nice day, you know, but you don't really feel like that. You kind of feel like the whole world is against you and nobody cares. And it's hard because when you look outside, you see people living their lives and normal lives and you start getting a little bit, maybe bitter. And you start thinking, why do I have to go through this? They don't. Why, why couldn't it be them? Then I could be the one going about my day. And, you know... At one side, you feel kind of bad for feeling like that, but then you still feel like that. So it's one of those things where it's not its not always pretty, um, and that's just kind of the way it works. If, if you allow yourself when you have something like this, you can really just fall into kind of a pit of, of despair and um, self-pity and, you know, that. Um, and it's one of those things where... It, 
you can't get too gung ho and say, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat this. I'm gonna. There is no beating it. <laughs> it's life with it. How am I gonna manage it? It's not about a race. How quickly can I get better? It's about maintaining for the long run. How long can I keep this going? So with that in mind, you have to do things specifically keeping in mind with your physical limitations, with maybe keeping your mental health in a good place, rather than going really excited and then, and then depressed. Really excited and then if, if you're manic, you know what I'm talking about. Manic, depressive, manic, depressed. And it's, when, when you're dealing with something like that, it's like, well, let, let's let's just try to, we're, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna get our get our bearings back. We're gonna, you know, get direction. We're gonna just take things easy, and that's really difficult to do, <laughs> especially um, because a lot of times people who are diagnosed with colitis are diagnosed before they're 30, and so it's kind of like one of those things where you have these hopes and dreams, and then all of a sudden you feel like you have no more hopes and hopes and dreams, and it's hard to kind of come to grips with that, and then to find a way forward instead of just dying in misery, and. So, as I was saying, you, you get bloating sometimes, you get stools go crazy, which causes sometimes hemorrhoids and anal fissures and those kinds of things. You get um, depressed, depressed, you get um, a lot of um, discomfort sometimes, um, it affects your sleep, it, it affects what you can eat, um, maybe when you can eat, everybody's a little bit different. So. It's not like there's a general rule of, when you have colitis, this is what you eat. It's more of, well, let's see what works for you. <laughs> and that's another thing that's a little bit kind of frustrating. So I kind of felt like going into this, I, I felt very bitter and very overwhelmed. And I was just super overstressed and over anxious, and I, I couldn't deal with it. And um, one of the things that really bothered me is just thinking that, you know, I gave the best of my health, the best of my years to doing ministry and I have nothing to show for it you know and the depressive side says I have nothing to show for it but then the anxious side says I'll never get, to get those years back but then somewhere deep in my heart I have this feeling like hey it, it was I, I don't I don't regret it I mean look at all the things that I accomplished look at the people that I helped look at you know the 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 things that I was able to the, the, the people who who were just in a bad place that I was able to impact their life in a po positive way you know but then sometimes you still have that feeling of like um, selfishness. You know, like, yeah, but this was my life. I I wanted I wanted more for me. You know, it's not that it's not that I'm not satisfied with what I did for them. It's just you kinda have now that I've spent that time and now that I don't have great health, now I'm at a different place where it's like, well I I kind of wish that I had more of that I hadn't spent all my energy on other people. And that's a very selfish thing to think and to say, and I know it's very unchristian, but at the same time, it's, it's how, that's what I really struggle with. And I don't have the answers, I don't have it figured out. I don't, I don't know why this is happening, how this is gonna go, what, what's going on with it, and really how to deal with it. I'm still in that kind of, like I'm twirling under the ocean. Um, and still trying to figure out which way the, the air is. But at the same time, you have these conflicting thoughts and sometimes you just wake up and you just have a lot of symptoms and you're just like, I just want to stop existing for a little bit. I want to find a safe place that I can just kind of close myself off. Then sometimes you wake up and everything feels fine. But then you, you have like, you know, something that happens and just like really alarming or, or I don't really want to get into it, but you know, stuff with your gut and stuff. Or sometimes you wake up and you're just having a hard time with your mental health and everything else is fine. It's just, you, you can't calm down. And then sometimes with colitis, it gives you this feeling of being on edge and, and being real restless and anxious. And so you feel like, oh man, my, my anxiety is going crazy. So then your anxiety starts going crazy because you think that you're having anxiety. And it's just very difficult to deal with it. It's one of those things where it's just like, okay, all right. Let's just take a deep breath. And um, so I think that it's just hard with colitis. Living with colitis is, I think, hard because it just gets to be where it's so overwhelming. Once you get kind of in a rut, it's a little bit easier. But 
adapting to it is kind of hard. Then it's also kind of hard because even if you do everything right, sometimes you can still have things happen in your gut that, that, that's wrong, and you're just like, I don't want to have to deal with this. And it doesn't matter because you do have to deal with it. You can't just not have colitis. Like, oh, uh, I decided not to be sick anymore, you know? Um, and I guess another thing that I'm frustrated about is because people have never really understood me. They didn't understand my, my personality and my character. People didn't really, I wasn't really the person that people um, watched out for. I was a person who was watching out for other people. And so then, you know, you get to a place and it's like, people don't get me. And so then you start having anxiety and depression and, you're, and everybody has their own answers, right? If you just pray hard enough, it'll just go away. If, you know, you just have to learn to think and learn to change your thinking. And, and, and I mean, if, and in some part that's true. Sometimes, like, for instance, when you have depression, you'll get in a place of saying, well, I just have depression. And, like, you'll just use it as an excuse to not try anymore, just give up, to just, you know, and I have depression. You know, it, I understand that you can't wish it away. You can't just magically not have it anymore. But at the same time, I also understand that you can't just let yourself die and waste away. And that's kind of kind of something that's frustrating because people don't understand what they understood me. They don't understand my anxiety and depression. Now I have colitis, which is another thing that people don't understand. If I had cancer, they'd, they'd oh, well, I know that that's bad. But they don't understand the day-to-day -day things that you go through, the, the, the pain that they just take for granted, the, the, things that, the things that they don't have to deal with that aren't really a factor so, I mean, the things that for them, it's not a factor, but for you, it's something you have to deal with every day. And it's one of those things where it's like, it just gets kind of frustrating because nobody actually wants to hear, but everyone wants to like be an expert on it. And that's kind of frustrating, having so many different things that have gone the same way. Um, and so I guess sometimes I feel a little bit bitter about the situation. Um, and I, I'm still trying to work through it, and I definitely don't have all the answers. And, you know, that's definitely okay. Maybe, for instance, maybe you have colitis, and you're just kind of in that same place. It's okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with this guy. I, I'm really not. But, um, you know, we can, we can just get through today, and that can be okay. You know, we don't have to have all the answers. We don't have to have it all, you know, have it all together all the time. We don't have to you know, feel like we've got it down or, you know, be all knowing and, and, and be okay. It's, it's okay to, to not, I mean, um, I could lie to you and say, Hey, I've got it all under control. And uh, like I said, colitis feeds my anxiety and then my anxiety feeds it. And so just kind of this repetitive cycle and you have to calm down and stuff. And it's hard because sometimes you're going to have problems. Um, when you have inflammation in your gut, sometimes it can cause a little bit of breathing problems. Um, or the, idea of a breathing problem. And when you have anxiety, it can cause breathing problems. It can, um, you know, cause other issues that really aren't related, but then somehow they all wheedle down to being related. Uh, <laughs> you know, and so you have these different things. Sometimes with anxiety, for instance, you lose your breath and you think, I have to remember to breathe or I'm just going to suffocate and die. So you start like overthinking your breathing and you start overthinking the things that you're overthinking and then it just worries you and you're all all the time and so you try to just kind of calm yourself down but then because of the colitis it kind of makes you feel and people with colitis have a much higher um likelihood of having anxiety and depression so there's that uh, but colitis makes you feel like sometimes you're feeling symptoms of, of anxiety attacks without actually so, like, for instance, there's nothing you can do. You can change what you're thinking about. It's not gonna. It's not gonna help. You can take medication. You're still gonna have it. It just maybe will mute it a little bit. It's just one of those things. And then, not everybody can handle the same thing. So there's always that person who, who you know, oh, I have the perfect solution. Like, okay, so I say, oh, I have colitis, and and so some people, oh, well, I'll pray that you're healed. And it's like, the medicine is is working just fine. Why don't you pray that? my anxiety will get better. And there's a lot of people who have a problem with doctors and then they think that I must have a problem with doctors too. And it's like, God can use doctors just like he can use anybody else. You know, and it's one of those things where it's like, I'd much rather have somebody come alongside me and listen to me or, or once again, pray for my anxiety to get under control. That, I would like that, 
you know, um, then, you know, everybody has their own little home remedies, right? So like one person was like, hey, take turmeric. Well, maybe you don't know anything about turmeric, but turmeric can also sometimes cause um, intestinal bleeding. And it actually did that in me. Evidently, the colitis did not like it. I, I don't know what it is about turmeric. I, I have no idea. Um, just kind of the way it is. Um, so one thing that's kind of been real life, life changing is I've always felt like I was never good enough, that I had to always prove myself, that I had to work and work and work. I was working seven days a week, um, over 60 hours a week, and just, just never really getting a chance to say, okay, enough, you know, and that was, that was hard. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that caused me to get so burnt out. So I'm, I'm having emotional issues like burnout mental issues like anxiety, physical issues like colitis, and they all hit at the same time. So you have to find a way to just kind of balance your life down and kind of take things slower. And it makes it harder because my boss is actually my father. Um, if you've ever worked with family, you know, just that it's kind of one of those things that's very stressful because you can't really ever be yourself. You have to kind of um, not be fake, but you just can't really be as open as you normally would be. Um, and this is another reason why things kind of just are overly stressful. Normally I'd talk to a pastor. My pastor is my father. So it's like, oh, right. <laughs> um, you know, and, and feeling like you're kind of closed off. There's really nowhere you can go. I, I would right now, today, I would pack up everything and just leave and move somewhere else if I could just run from it. But I can't run from it. If I go somewhere else, I'm going to have colitis there just like I have it. Here, I'm gonna to have to deal with this, with the symptoms. I'm gonna to have to deal with treating it. Just running, just to move, just to move isn't gonna fix it. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm never gonna move again in my whole life. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to get through today. How can I possibly know what I'm gonna do in the future? But what I'm getting at is, I have to constantly keep an eye on my stress because if I allow myself to get too stressed, really any stress at all, it drastically impacts my symptoms. So I had to, today I woke up for instance and had anxiety for no reason. Nothing happened, um, just woke up with anxiety. So then my mind starts going crazy. I'm trying to slow, I'm trying to stop what I'm thinking about. And it, you men know what I'm talking about. You can just stop thinking about stuff. Just stop thinking. Women can't do it. I don't know why, but men just have that ability to just turn off their brain, stop thinking. and. So doing that, but then still feeling the effects of anxiety. So you have to kind of turn your brain back on so you can kind of slow your heart rate, slow your breathing, calm down. All the while, your um, your brain is kind of going a little bit crazy because it, it thinks that we're in a fight or flight situation. And so this is a good example. You wake up with this, there's not much you can do about that. And so then it starts impacting you and, and, and your health. And you're like, okay, <laughs> this is great. You know, and so you're trying to lower your stress and watch your stress and everything, but at the same time, you can't you can't avoid the stress of life, the stress of being alive, but then also you can't avoid the stress of of things just happening that you have no control over. Like for instance, today waking up with anxiety that wasn't caused by anything. It's not like a panic attack, okay? It's not like, oh, you just breathe through it and it goes away. No, I'm talking about hour after hour, sometimes day long anxiety spills that you can't do anything about. And so there they are. And you're trying to work, you're, you're trying to work through this and you didn't do anything to deserve it. It's not like it's your fault or some nonsense. And so you just have to work through it. All the while people are telling you, you just need to pray harder. You, you need to have faith in God. Well, if, if you would just control your thinking, then you wouldn't be like this anymore. It's like, <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. As much as I'd like for them to know what it's like to be me, at the same time, I wouldn't wish the things that, are, that I'm going through on my worst enemy, the people I despise the most. And, I, and there are people that I genuinely despise. I know, once again, pastors and Christians aren't supposed to not like, aren't supposed to have people that they don't like. Well, I do. There are people that I don't like. Not a lot of them, but they are there. Uh, they're just annoying people. They're, they're, they're just, they go around causing problems and I don't like them. I mean, you're going to tell me that you don't have problems with people in your life that you don't like? Um, and I wouldn't r wish this on them. People have betrayed me and stabbed me in the back and, and you know, spread all kinds of nonsense in the community. I wouldn't wish it on them. 
but at the same time, you wish that people would understand what it's like. And that's kind of hard because you just have to let it go. They're not going to understand what it's like. Oh, well. It's going to be okay. Um, I think those are probably some of the hardest things that I had to deal with. But as far as watching my stress, you know, so you can't, you can't work too long or get too invested in work because when you start getting, letting yourself get real riled up and, and stressed, it, it, it bad, bad. So you have to find some way to do your job while kind of, you know, staying calm. Some things that can help is um, breathing ex excuse me, breathing exercises. Um, you know, just take like five to ten minutes at work, maybe like every, I don't know, two hours or three hours or I don't know how your boss works or how your job works and just kind of just try to do breathing exercises with deep breathing, you know. Just kind of working through it like that um, for a couple minutes. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. I will say that those kinds of things work better if you do them on a consistent like day-to-day -day basis than if you just do them on the random happenstance. Um, but I have to constantly be concerned about my stress. You know, don't be stressed about your stress. And it's like, but when all when you're trying to watch out for you know kind of calming down and not being stressed. You're thinking about stress, which is making you stressed, and it's just one of those things where you, you, you can't think about it, but you have to think about it, and so it's just frustrating. And what makes it even worse is that people who don't go through this kind of stuff, they're like, oh, well, I know how to do that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I thought I did too before I had chronic health issues, so there's that. And once again, this goes back to the thing, if there's always going to be those annoying people in your life that they just always seem to say something that that really rubs you raw you know or that um they have the solution just like okay <laughs> all right just you just gotta let it go it's gonna be out there don't be surprised um one thing though is i try to be more realistic about my day and what i can actually get done rather than just trying to plow through this to-do list you know I, I try to take time and set up an actual goal and then have clear times of when i start and when i stop so that way it's like i know okay I don't have to deal with that right now. Um, then another thing that makes it too hard is I can't push myself too hard or, you know, overwhelm myself too much. I have to kind of be sensitive to my to my body. And it's like, for instance, sometimes my body will be like, hey, I need a nap. And I'll be like, oh, I can't take a nap because I got work to do and stuff. And meanwhile, my body's like, no, you need to take a nap. And if I don't take a nap, it... It just wrecks havoc, you know, and it's one of those things where it's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, you don't want to feel like a child or like an old invalid, but at the same time, when these kinds of things happen, you just kind of feel like another reminder that I'm going to die. And that's one of the things that I think is hard to deal with because you go through this kind of um, place in your life of, of kind of hiding the truth, fighting from the truth, like, oh no, I'll be fine. And then there's like these little things that happen that remind you, oh no, I am mortal and I will die. Well, this is one of those things where it's like, it's not just a little reminder, it's like constantly there. Hey, you're gonna die. Your body is already falling apart and you're not even 40. And it's like, great, my anxiety needed that extra ammunition. So I'm really glad that, really glad that we got that out of the way. That's, that's fantastic. Um, and I'm trying not to be a downer about this, but it's one of those things where when you have colitis, you have to you have to work through it. You know, you can't just avoid it and hope that it goes away. And that's where I'm at. I'm trying to trying to work through it. I'm trying to deal with it. And I don't know if things are ever going to get better. I don't know, but I know that right now I'm just trying to deal with today. And um, that's just a bit overwhelming. That is a bit overwhelming. Um, One thing that I try not to do is I try not to worry too much about the future. I just try, okay, let's just let's think about today. And sometimes my wife will be like, hey, do you have any ideas you want to eat for Lent and for, for next week or something like that? Or things you want me to get from the store and I'll just all of a sudden just feel super overwhelmed for, for no reason. She was just asking me about if there's anything special she wants me to get. That's it. But in my mind, it's just all these thoughts just getting congested and it's like, it's like rush hour, you know, or like, you know, when you're when you're on, your, you're on your computer and you push a button and like the whole computer just freezes for a second. It's like, hold on. 
ah, brain freeze. You know, and you're just like, do I unplug it? What's going on here? And then like 30 seconds later, your computer's like, okay, we're good. What? That happens, especially now that all this is going on, it happens quite a bit. And so I have like this, you know, where my stress and anxiety levels are getting lower because we actually know what it is. We're trying to take care of it and that kind of stuff. But it gets a little bit, it causes your anxiety to go crazy when you're done with something. You're like, okay, if I do this, it'll get better. Well, then you do that and you're faithful to it and you make sure to always eat the right things and do the right things. And then sometimes you still have things that happen. It's just like, why is this happening? And it's one of those things where it gets very frustrating and overwhelming. I mean, if I had to summarize my whole life with Clyde so far, it'd be, this is overwhelming. And sometimes I just don't think that I can process it. And so I have to kind of take breaks sometimes. So like we'll be, we'll be thinking about, you know, planning out for something and I'll just have to step back and say, I can't deal with this right now and just go and, and read a book or something, which is now here's the flip side of that. Because of my anxiety, my brain has been super going crazy. So I tried to do things like uh, read more to keep my mind occupied. Um, and then my body sometimes feels restless. So I had to do something about that, you know. And so I'm trying, I'm trying, you know, these daily exercise routines and stuff, eating healthy, you know. But, <laughs> well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, so one thing with colitis that I didn't really expect is that your mental health has to constantly be managed, right? So um, you have to, you know, find some way up here to get through it. Because it's not just about taking pills and eating the right thing and trying to watch out for this. It, it, there's a good part of colitis that, that's up here. It's like when you exercise, right? Maybe you're doing an, an, an endurance exercise. Maybe you're trying to ride 100 miles on your bike in a day. You know, you're that's the goal, right? And you, um, if you don't train correctly, your body's going to have problems, right? Well, it goes beyond that too. Up here, up here is a good part of where that endurance ride is, is, is won or lost. When you start telling yourself up here, I can't, I can't do this, your body starts giving out. And it's kind of the same thing with colitis. It's not just about, you know, preparing your body physically, doing all the right things physically. There's a whole mental aspect to it and emotional aspect to it. And in many cases, spiritual aspect to it. They actually did a study and found that people who have colitis, if they have a regular practice of meditation, now this was not religion specific. Um, atheists can even do things that are um, meditation-isk. Est? Meditation? Well, kind of meditational, let's just say that. Um, so it's not it's not religion specific, but people who did those things, which would be typically be considered as a spiritual aspect of our being, um, that they have lesser symptoms of colitis that can keep things from being as bad. Um, so so there's all these different things. It's one of those things where it really impacts your whole world. Like for instance, people who have cancer, right? People always think, oh, you have to go through cancer treatment. Well, it's not just the cancer treatments. It's your body. It, it, first off, it, it, it's thinking that your body is failing you, wondering if this is going to be the day that you're going to die, wondering if, you know, how long you can hold this up, wondering what happens if you just give up. I mean, why, why even fight it? I'm dying anyways. You know what I mean? Where you have these constant, um, constant thoughts and then you just feel like crap not only just from the treatment itself makes you feel like crap emotionally and in every other way but see what i mean so there's all these different aspects and, and people who don't have cancer they don't think about that they don't think about waking up in the middle of the night and throwing up blood they don't think about you know having severe crippling anxiety and having anxiety poop and, and all this different they don't think about these kinds of stuff they don't think about the intense pain that comes with with cancer um the weakness the the, the feeling like you're just outmoded and like you're the whole world is moving by you they don't get that and it's, it's very similar with, with colitis people don't get it you know and that's i guess frustrating because everybody wants to be a master to everything but nobody actually knows much about anything um even like when i used to get on you know arguments on on like youtube for instance which i don't anymore what a waste of time but when i used to you know you would have these people that knew a lot about like one thing, right? The, the, the biggest people who did it were, were atheists. I would say something and they would come over here with like their, their textbook answer. They just, oh, they, they, they know how to tear everything down. It's like, are you listening to what you're saying? And then you respond to them like, oh, 
oh, oh no. So let's change topics onto something else I know a lot about. And it's like, that's exactly how people are with, with things like colitis. They think that they know everything. And it's like, okay, all right. Let me tell you how much you don't know. Um, so you have to constantly manage your mental health. And depression comes right alongside with, with, with um, colitis. And so you have to kind of focus long term. I don't know how to do this. Focus on your long term health, but if, but you can't focus on the future because you get too stressed about it. So it's one of, the, uh, it's one of those things. It's just kind of taking day by day while thinking your long term how this is going to affect you. I don't, I don't know how to how to say that. I don't know. Um, some days I'll just have low energy reasons, energy levels for no reason, and I'll have to take a nap. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just something that happens. Um, I'll, sometimes I'll just wake up with high anxiety, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Um, some days I can't lift much. You know, if I'm having bad issues, I, I can't lift stuff. Since so then, everybody's all, "You should lift that. You're a young, healthy man. Why don't you? You shouldn't let this this woman carry that." And it's like, <laughs> not that I don't believe in chivalry, dude, but I really can't. Why don't you carry it if you're so worried about it? You know, and what, what are you gonna do? Go around whining everywhere you go? I have colitis. I have colitis. You don't want to be that person. But at the same time, it's like, you know, just because I look fine on the outside doesn't mean that I'm okay. You know, and those, those people who, who don't get that, they're always like tearing you down with you, like these little stupid sarcastic remarks. And I'm actually surprised at how many of them, how many of those people call themselves religious. Everybody thinks that they're so spiritual, they're so good, right? But then it's like, what about that part where Jesus said that, you know, loving your neighbor was like the second greatest commandment and like the whole the whole law, that was the second thing that the whole law was about, you know, and it's like, oh, well, you know, I don't really think that that's really living people, but whatever. Um, yeah. Sometimes I can't even have my kids sit on my lap because I'll, I'll be, you know, in pain in a certain area, which is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, sometimes it makes it where you can't sleep, you'll just wake up in the middle of the night for no reason. And anxiety and stress does that too. So sometimes you have like four or five different things going on. You'll just wake up and you'll need to go poop and you'll just be wide awake. You'll wake up wide awake. So you go to the bathroom, you come back and you're just sitting there. So you try to relax yourself. So then your heart starts going crazy because of the anxiety. It's like, <laughs> okay. All right. I wasn't even feeling anxious, but now that I'm having heart palpitations, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Um, Sometimes you can't get comfortable while you're sleeping because you have to sleep in a certain position because you can't lay on the side or the area where there's inflammation. People don't understand and don't think it's that bad. You don't know how many time, how many people I, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to deal with this. I'm trying to get my bearings straight. And some people are just not everybody, but some people are just straight up rude about it. Like, so it's like. <laughs> Colitis has a way of affecting your entire lifestyle, which is okay, but it's hard to live with. Because like when people go on diets, like they'll they'll try to diet, right? And then they'll last like two weeks and then they'll stop. That's a diet. That's not a lifestyle change. Well, people who get on go on a lifestyle change, sometimes they try to like go back for a day and have like a cheat day, and it never really works out for them because your body doesn't really work like that. Well, in colitis, there is no cheat days. There aren't like a, there's not like a day that I can just be like. I don't have to watch my water levels and I don't have to watch my, my medication. It's fine. I just, if I feel like taking my medication, it doesn't work like that. Um, some people think, oh yeah, I'm just going to stop taking my medicine because I'm not having any, any symptoms. Don't be stupid. Man, oh man. Um, it's best to just focus on, on today and let people think whatever they want. That's something that I am frustrated by, but that's something that I've had to slowly start realizing is it's like, they're going to think what they're going to think. I, I'm not responsible for what they think. Um, sometimes with colitis, my symptoms can get kind of kind of scary. And that's kind of hard. Because, like, you'll be thinking that you'll be doing better. And then, like, you'll see, like, blood in the toilet again. You're just like, I thought we were getting better. I thought we were doing everything right. And so you kind of have to go with, like, this a couple days of anxiety. And, and you get back up on the horse. And you're like, okay, well, let's... let's try to figure this out and try to, sometimes you get so distraught that you just, you see something and it reminds you of some, of like that hospital visit or something, you know, and it'll just, it'll just, just take over and you'll just be like, oh man. 
And uh, it's one of those things you have to kind of work through, and it's very scary. And uh, it was very scary before I before we knew that it was colitis. And, you know, having to deal with it and not really knowing what it was was just very... But then there's there's another aspect of colitis that's very scary, and that's this. Your, your medicine can just stop working for whatever reason. Sometimes people just have a sudden worsening of symptoms, and their medicine does not work. And that's, that's just it. It just doesn't work anymore. And there's nothing you can do about it. So then um, sometimes in the most severe cases, what they have to do is they have to take out your large intestine, sometimes your rectum um, or colon, whatever. Um, and there's a couple different surgeries that they can do, but either way, so you have that constantly looming over you, the possibility of surgery, the possibility of, of losing, you know, the simple pleasure of taking a poop, a, a normal, healthy poop. Now you might say, that's a stupid thing to say. You don't, no, 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 no. It's not a stupid thing to say. When you have a good bowel movement and you feel better, you feel like you really, you know, oh, that made me feel better. With colitis, you forget what that's like. You have constant bathroom issues, constant anxiety about your bathroom issues, sometimes a lot and constant pain with your bathroom issues, sometimes the feeling that you need to go to the bathroom when you don't need to go to the bathroom, sometimes, uh, you know, all this hemorrhoid and all this nonsense, and it's like there, there's nothing you can you can do. And so you, you go between passing razor blades and passing, you know, water, and it's just a lot of anxiety with it. No, I, it's not stupid. There, there is a simple pleasure to taking a normal bowel movement. And these are things that, that you can't just dance around it. And so when you have a surgery, first off, that doesn't take away all your problems. You're still going to have problems. You just have a different set of problems. And then second off, you can never have that again. You have to have special diets, special medications, special this, special that for the rest of your life. Now, I already have some of that. You know, I, I still have my intestines, um, my large intestine, I mean, which I still have my small intestine anyway, so I don't know why I'm distinguishing, just clarifying. Um, but this is going to be a lifetime of management, a lifetime of trying to take the right stuff and, 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 and do the right things it's not just going to suddenly disappear. It's like a treatment that never ends. And I'm at an increased risk for colon cancer and other things. So colonoscopies are going to be a regular part of my future. I, I get very anxious thinking about being in there again because they don't let my wife come with me. And I, I love my wife very much. I like her being around me. And I, they put you in this, just this cold room and I don't really want to take sedation. So, I mean, it's oh, I'm okay with it. I, I understand that I'll have to do it again. Within five years, I'm going to have another colonoscopy. It's just something that I've come to accept. It's 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 okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not overly happy about it, but it is what it is. Um, but every once in a while, you have the idea of, I don't want to do it again. And it's like, well, I don't really have that choice. And like I say, at any minute, my medication can stop working or we'll need to try a different medication. And the medication that I'm on doesn't really have any negative effect on my body. And so I really don't, well, so long as I drink a lot of water. Uh, so I really don't want to change medications to something else that might not do good. And so it's not just about having these scary symptoms itself. It's about dealing with the, dealing with the fear of uncertainty, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. Maybe tomorrow is the day that I have to, you know, that I have a very serious bathroom issue, and we'd go into the ER and find out that we have to take out my intestines. I don't know, and that not knowing is the hard part. If it was something where it's like, oh, no, once you're on the medication, everything gets better forever. It's like. But it doesn't. And that uncertainty is very scary. Um, but, you know, with that being said, there's this uncertainty in life that, you know, any of us could die at any moment. You know, maybe I could be worrying about something and die from something completely unrelated. <laughs> uh, 
Um, that's a joke. Um, the medication so far seems very safe. Um, I was very concerned. I, I hate taking new medications, and I hate the idea of being on a lifetime medication because if I can't get it, if if something happens, and then you start worrying about like, well, what happens if this whole Russia Ukraine thing gets like even worse, and something it affects somehow the medication and stuff, and I can't get my medicine. You see what I mean? You start going down this this dark road of, of worrying, and, and you have to kind of stop yourself and think, okay, let's let's just calm down for a little bit, you know. And these are important why it's important. Oh, this is another reason why it's important to take naps is because y when you take a nap, it kind of helps your mind to kind of reset. And then you don't worry so much about it. Um, and the funny thing about all this is I've actually been getting better sleep than I have, you know, for years. My whole life I had probably getting to sleep. Well, unless I'm experiencing severe symptoms, I actually get better sleep now than I, I ever have. Like actually sleeping enough. Um, the, a lot of people, a lot of other people with colitis though have different, um, different medications from enemas to suppositories to, you know, things that go here, things that everywhere. And that's something that once again is a little bit hard to deal with thinking about it. And I hope that I don't have to take that, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Here's where drinking water is absolutely essential. Not only is it essential for my medicine, if I don't, it'll mess up my kidneys. So there's kind of that. But then also, um, colitis itself, you have to make sure to stay very hydrated. Because if you don't, you're going to have some bad symptoms. So um, it's very important to learn how, for me to learn how to calm down and meditate. Um, it, it reduces your symptoms and it makes it where you don't go crazy. Um, you know, getting out of the idea of this is a race, you know, I got to hurry up and, and getting into more of a mindset of I can make it through. Let's just focus on getting through today. Um, one thing that is I've kind of had to change my expectations of myself and my life. I can't work at the same capacity as other people. I can't be as protective as those other people. I can't. That's okay. It's, it's, not a comp it's not a comparison. You know, my dad is like really, um, I don't want to say hyper person, but like he doesn't really like to sit down. And so as a kid, you feel like you have to be in competition with that. I can't compete with that. I couldn't have competed with that before when it was just me. I couldn't compete with it when I had anxiety and depression. I definitely can't compete with it now when I have colitis. Um, which, you know, part of me is kind of relieved because I've had these symptoms like for, for a long time that are now like, oh, that's what that was. That was the beginning stages of colitis. Got it. Got it. It started to make more sense. Um, so I, I've had to kind of change that and kind of had to be okay with that change too. Sometimes you, you can just, like when you get older and you start realizing that your body is like not young anymore, you kind of go through like this, no, and you just like re refuse to accept it. Um, it, it kind of feels like that, like the strength of my youth is, is gone, you know, because my body is failing to carry out a basic function of normal digestion, you know, and um, that's kind of hard to deal with. And so it makes you feel like you're old and like useless. But at the same time, there's a flip side of that because you have to, you have to realize that you're not an invalid yet and you kind of have to push yourself at the same time that you're kind of protecting yourself from being pushed too hard it's a very hard thing to do and sometimes you'll you'll push yourself too hard and maybe exercise too hard for instance which can make your inflammation worse and um, so you have to push yourself without pushing yourself too hard and it's like this this little I feel like I'm walking the gangplank right and no matter what I do I'm gonna be jumping off into the ocean anyways you know <laughs> um, so I, I guess a large part of it has just been me trying to trying to change my expectations of myself, not holding myself to that person's life, but accepting that my life is okay. Um, having to change my lifestyle and saying, you know, this this is just how I'm going to have to live. It's not fair, and, ah, you know. But at the same time, it's like, well, it doesn't matter if it's fair. This is how it is. Um, and I've also found myself getting a little bit having a little bit of a hard time with my religious aspect because at one time you kind of want to start getting mad at God like why are you letting this happen like what, what what's going on 
you know, it, I'm not a bad person. Why, why aren't you flip this on the bad people, you know? But then at the same time, you're just kind of like, God, I need your help to get through this. And so you have like these conflicting emotions. Thank God that God is not as mentally unstable as, as me because I go from this, in the span of five seconds, I go, you know, to like, God, do you even pay attention to me? To this other thing of, God, I thank you for your blessings. And then I just see that, you know, you're always working on this thing. And it's just like, huh, whew, a bit of a, a bit of a crazy person, I guess. So, you know, I already talked about how sometimes you're going to have bloating, discomfort, cramping. You have to learn your body and your diet. You have to, you know, be sensitive to what your body needs. And there's going to be people who, who try to make you, like, excuse, like, well, you should be working harder. You should be doing this harder. It's like, I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Moving on. Um, and it's important that I, that I, you know, sometimes people, have, like I was talking about this just a second ago, people get stubborn and they, oh, well, I'm not going to change my diet. I'm an American and I'm going to eat whatever I want. And it's like, okay, I get what you're saying, but, you know, it's important that I do change my lifestyle and don't be stubborn about it. Um, and then if colitis was the only thing I was dealing with, I feel like it would be a little bit different. But it's not. So managing medication is sometimes hard because you yeah, got to remember to take certain ones at certain times and, and I got alarms on my phones and still sometimes I, I forget. Um, and dealing with stool inconsistency is very frustrating. Sometimes pain, the pain just kind of gets distracting and people will be like trying to, you know, talk with you about something and you're just like, yeah, yeah, ow, ow, ow. And then sometimes you'll be like in a meeting or something and you're just going to be kind of your mind is not in the meeting and you just need to go home and take a nap and nobody else understands that because they don't deal with it um that 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 one of those things that's just kind of it's a life thing it's a life thing you got to work through it at, at day to day um and here's the thing people with chronic issues it's okay to prioritize i used to look at some people who are like for instance had you know, back pain and back issues and stuff. And, oh, well, they're, they're lazy. They need to get up off their couch and clean their house. And it's like, well, have a chronic issue for a little bit. That's not that's not laziness. Laziness is when you have the ability to do something and you simply don't because you'd rather just worry about yourself and, and have fun. Having a chronic issue is not laziness. That is, you are dealing with something and you have to sometimes prioritize for the sake of your own well-being. Your dishes get out of control. Your laundry gets out of control. But you get through the day. But you get through the day. And maybe your house won't be as clean. But you didn't kill yourself. So it's one of those things where it's like, well, yeah. And I know that a lot of people judge me. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. He's lazy. He isn't cleaning his yard. His weeds are getting out of control. It's like, well, you know, I had to pick today between being okay and having my grass cut. So I made the decision that I thought my wife and kids would be most concerned about. And that's just how it is. You just have to let it, let it rest that some people are going to have loud mouths that should probably be closed more often than not. Um, another thing is, is I, I, I've had to learn how to make reasonable to-do lists, realistic ones, right? So instead of me doing all of this, how about this? Well, I'm going to do all the laundry, all the dishes, da, 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 yeah, plus my plus my job, plus I'm going to do right on the side. It's like, how about instead of all of those things, how about today you start on the laundry and you start on, on your to-do list for work, and let's just see where we get to. If you have time and you have energy, go to the next thing. Great. You can have productive days, but it's okay to have unproductive days too. Your life is more than just being product productive. Um you're worth more than being productive. Just because you don't get a lot of stuff done doesn't mean you don't matter. Um, one thing that I encourage myself with, with is, is it could be worse. Today, no matter how bad today gets, it could get worse. Yeah, it could. Another thing as I encourage myself with is, is uh, you know, it, it could get worse in the future. 
So instead of worrying about it, try to be thankful for where I am. I'm doing okay today. That has to be okay. That has to be enough. And part of this is difficult because I'm trying to stay positive, trying to stay thankful. And at the same time, there's this idea that, well, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow this is going to be the day that so-and-so happens. And it's like, well, that's what I'll face tomorrow. We'll get through that tomorrow. And you had to just kind of separate with, that's tomorrow's battle. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But uh, if it is, well, we'll worry about it tomorrow. And uh, so then some, there's, I just, there's a couple few things that I wanted to say that just kind of have helped me with my bad times that I, I think maybe might help you too. First off, a bad day isn't a bad life. You can acknowledge that you're going to have some good days and some bad days, and that's okay. Not every day has to be perfect. Not every day do you have to always have it together. That took me a long time to realize. Another thing that took me a long time to realize is you're going to have bad days, but find the good in the bad. So maybe today I'm in a lot of pain, but maybe I can still spend time with my wife. And here's another thing that I learned. Just because you're having a rough time doesn't mean it has to be a bad day. Maybe you're not feeling feeling good or whatever. It doesn't mean that it has to be a bad day. Like, for instance, today I woke up with anxiety and some symptoms and, you know, whatnot. And it's like, yeah, but it doesn't have to be a bad day. I don't have to throw away the whole day just because I'm having some a rough time. Especially because good days don't... Well, they're coming more often now than they did before, but they don't come around enough for me to waste them. So when I have a, when, when even, even if it's not a good day and there's just a sliver of goodness and I try to seize onto that because it's like, I don't know how long this is going to last, you know, enjoy it while it's here. Um, I, I have learned to enjoy the little things. And to be thankful for the good days. When you have a good day, be all the more thankful for it. Here's the problem. You're going to be really worn out and tired from the bad day. And it's going to leak into the good day. Remember when that happens, but today is a good day. And maybe you're overburdened. Maybe you can't do much of anything except for get out of out of bed. And That's okay. Okay, just hold it together a little bit longer. You won't always feel like this. And I hope. some There's got to eventually be a good day, right? <laughs> It won't last for forever is what I'm getting at. And uh, maybe sometimes you're in a place where it's just not someone just having a good day. It's having a better day than yesterday. I understand that too. But I want to remind you just a few a few things here. First off, you don't have to do today over. Once today is done, it's done. You don't have to do it again. Another thing that I tell myself quite frequently is that I don't have to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is tomorrow's problem. I don't have to do tomorrow. Nobody asked me to do tomorrow. God didn't tell me to do tomorrow. It's today. Just getting through today. Um, that that helps me because sometimes I think about, oh, well, tomorrow I have to... I don't have to do tomorrow. I have to do today. Um, another thing is, you know, I'm keeping in mind that I'm going to have to get a, a colonoscopy in the future. I'm not really that excited. It helps me knowing that's not today's problem. That's an overwhelming thought and... How many colonoscopies I'm going to get in my life, I don't know. What's going to happen with them, I don't know. I don't know any of this. And it's kind of one of those things that are very difficult to think about, so I try not to, and just realize it's not today's problem. The messiness, I don't always have to have it all together. I don't have to always... It's okay. Um, I don't have to have it figured out. It's okay to be a mess. And... Uh, you know, there's a song that goes, maybe it's okay if I'm not okay. You know, there's just, sometimes we get stressed out about the fact that we're stressed out and kind of a hot mess. And we think, oh man, I'm never going to get myself together. I'm never going to. That's all right. I, uh, I don't always feel like dealing with it. And it's okay to not always feel like dealing with it. Um, that's also okay. Uh, I am in the process of trying to decide whether or not to take medication for my anxiety. Um... I haven't really decided yet. Um, 
but there's a really good chance that I will. And uh, I am actually currently, right now, at, in the process of um, getting a counselor. I have set up the appointment to do the initial setup thing, you know, with him. And uh, I'm hoping that it's going to go well. I always tell people that, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting a counselor. It's just that I have been so hesitant to get one because I've had some bad experience with counselors and um, I don't like the idea of wasting time and also I don't want to have to deal with that. I know that people need counselors but sometimes I don't really want to open up to somebody. And so I, I, I just wanted to, I know this wasn't really one of my traditional videos where I'm actually helping other people with anxiety and depression that kind of stuff I just wanted to take some time to talk it through with my own issues and uh, who knows maybe there's somebody out there with colitis that, that maybe this will be helpful for I don't know um, but if I had to say something for other people with colitis I would just say this we're gonna get through it we're gonna get through it some other people you're gonna look at them and you're gonna say I wish that they had it instead of me. That's okay. It's okay to feel like that. But they have their own issues to deal with, and we have our issues to deal with. And we're going to get through. Let's, let's not give up, because we can still squeeze some, some good out of the bad. And, uh, you know, it isn't, 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 it isn't all bad. You know, like last year... For instance, I, I took a family a trip with my family, stayed beachfront for pennies, thanks to COVID, actually, I think. Um, and I biked, you know, my first century ride on my bike. I, you know, it, it's going to be okay. I, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this.